and welcome. This is Mary Ellen McGonigal with the MEM Edge Show, the show where we put you in front of where the action is in the broader market. So lots to cover today. Let's go ahead and jump right in, take a look at our agenda. First and foremost, as always, we're going to take a look at the current market environment. Of course, as always, you want to have a very solid stance or sense of not only where the current markets are, but where we may be projected to head. And of course, that's a very difficult premise in these markets, but we are going to go ahead and drill down, take a close look. And then we're also going to see there are really vibrant areas of growth in the face of coronavirus. And this is a highly unusual development. Normally in bear market periods, you see generally most areas declining. This week after a thorough review, and we are gonna get into all of that, you, uh, I think you will be pleasantly surprised to note that there are areas that are withstanding the general overall downward pressure. So we're going to spend time getting into not only those areas, but specific stocks. And then uh, defensive plays come to life, and it's not all areas of defensive. There's only two actually three select areas that are generally viewed as defensive that are really bubbling up to the forefront. So we are going to take a look at that. Also, oil, big story this week with oil prices rising 32% after reaching historic lows. So is it ready to bottom? There are very, very few, but select plays as oil prices are potentially rebounding. Still a lot of uncertainty there with the big OPEC meeting on Monday, but I'm going to share with you some names to keep on your radar screen. Very high yielders, interesting looking charts. So let's so let's go ahead and get started with that view of the broader markets. As always, we are taking a look here at the S&P 500. This is a daily price chart. I've gone ahead and overlaid some simple moving averages that from my work are really uh, quite powerful and quite helpful. And I'm going to add one additional one. But that green line is your 10-day simple moving average. The red is your 50-day simple moving average. And then that blue line is the 200-day simple moving average. I've gone ahead and added a 21-day simple moving average, a very helpful filter in this current market environment. And I think you'll see why as we take a closer look here. Uh, we can see that the price, we did hit that March 23rd low. Markets are attempting to carve out a bottom here. So what we are looking at is shorter term, near term, that 10 day simple moving average acting as potential support. Now, unfortunately, the markets did close at 2488. That uh, 10 day simple moving average is at 2500. Super, just a little dipped below it. Uh, good news is volume was, was rather light today. But what I also did want to point out is this purplish line. That's your 21-day simple moving average. And we can see that the index currently, certainly over this last week, has bounced around and in essence is trapped. It uh, seemingly is finding support at the 10-day, but then finding resistance at that 21-day on any rally attempts. So we are in a, you know, a bit of a tight range-bound environment. And ideally, of course, a break above that 21-day simple moving average would be quite constructive as it would allow the broader markets, in this case, the S&P 500, to potentially advance up to these other areas, such as this red 50-day simple moving average. The other indicators I've overlaid in addition is we can see that the RSI, that is a relative strength 
indicator, which is a momentum indicator, we are on this daily still in negative territory. Ideally, uh, certainly in bull, nice upward trending bull phases. We have a nice RSI up here in positive territory. So uh, we are still essentially attempting to get back into, again, with a break above that 21, uh, coupled with a positive RSI, that certainly would be a near-term positive signal. We can look here at the MACD, that's your moving average, convergence, divergence, another momentum indicator. This black line up through the red is generally a signal that this downward momentum has shifted. So we like that. That certainly is constructive. Of course, ideally, as again, we go back to these nice upward trending bullish phases, we want that MACD to be up there above zero, but certainly that would be an awful lot to ask in the current market environment. So we're getting mixed signals, but I will say a market, again, that is attempting to uh, carve out a bottom. Let's just take a moment here on this S&P. Go ahead and pull up a longer term. The longer term charts, and this is going to be for your individual stock holdings as well as the broader markets, it will provide more insight as to bigger picture and a prognosis longer term. So with this weekly price chart, I have this red 10-week or 50-day simple moving average, and then that blue 40-week uh, or 200-day simple moving average. The relevance here is lost with this severe intense drop that we've seen certainly over this three-week period following that peak in price at the end of February. But let's take a look at some of the other outlying indicators. This RSI, that is that momentum indicator, attempting rather feebly, but attempting to reverse out of this oversold. You can see this darkened period, the RSI did get oversold. And uh, for those of you that have been following me, you'll know that an RSI in an oversold period is highly unusual, but it is a necessary ingredient in any kind of potential longer term bounce out of this oversold period. So it is still negative. We're below this dash net neutral 50 on the weekly. And again, going back historically to this reversal after the 2018 end of year bear market, when that RSI on the weekly, uh, this daily RSI positive was your initial uh, signal, on the weekly, when we get an RSI, it does foretell much longer term upside advances. On the stochastics, another momentum indicator, we are still oversold on this weekly chart. This is another, uh, the stochastics can be an earlier signal. Again, harking back to that December uh, 2018 bear market, we can see when the stochastics eventually advance out of an oversold position, it is a uh, foretelling of a longer term upside potential on your weekly chart. So let's drill down. Of course, as always, we want to take a look at some of the sectors and what's going on underneath the S&P 500. So this is what's called a candle glance view, a two-month thumbnail chart of each of those 11 sectors in the S&P 500. I've gone ahead and added that RSI indicator and sorted it in descending order. I want to get a sense of where potential strength versus weakness is. So up here on the upper left side is going to be your stronger sectors and down here on the far right, your weaker sectors in this current market environment. So let's take a look up here in the forefront. We can see consumer staples up here, a nice defensive area. Uh, we are going to take a look at about four really compelling stocks within the staple sector right now that are uh, giving positive buy signals. For those of you that are inclined to trade this market, I would do so very, very cautiously. However, uh, as you'll see, we'll take a quick look at the VIX and the volatility is still very evident. And longer term, we have not uh, put a bottom in yet. But certainly defensive plays, as in other bear market periods, can be uh, a wonderful buffer against against the broader market's downtrend. So here's healthcare. This particular move here is being led certainly by a number of healthcare stocks. Biotechs were up 
this week, despite the S&P 500 being down 2.8%, they were up uh, over 1.5%. But there are other areas in healthcare we are going to drill down there. Uh, technology, kind of up here in the forefront, not overly encouraging. The tech sector was down less than the broader markets by a good 1%. So that's constructive. If we have time, we will get into, but I've reviewed these areas in the past, uh, but hopefully we'll get a, to take a quick look there. Utilities, another defensive area, quite surprised to see it here in the forefront. The utility sector was down 7% for the week. This is something that I've talked about in the past, the fact that commercial utility as we are quarantined at home, corporate utility usage is dropping and has dropped very dramatically. We've seen this in Europe, in China. Uh, they were front runners as far as this swift drop in utility usage. Uh, the at home utility usage is not going to in any way uh, take up that slack. So as we move on, energy attempting to reverse this downtrend. I'll go ahead and pull this chart up so you can get a better look here. This is an historic historical drop that we've seen in the energy sector driven by those oil stocks. So we are seeing this reversal attempt out of this oversold area. So I'm going to get into that, share some areas there that you can take a look at, and then go ahead and uh, drill down even further. We can see financials really in the doldrums here, down 6.6% for the week as interest rates continue to decline very significantly. Discretionary stocks are down as well, down almost 6% this week. And just a lot of talk because unemployment came out today. It was very uh, expected, but still hit this sector hard as you, uh, unemployment, of course, hit an historic high given the current unemployment situation. So that's the sectors. Let's go ahead over, take a look at some of these underlying industry groups, certainly those that are relevant to the current market environment. I have areas I follow closely, but I did broaden that out this week. Again, using that RSI and sorting it in descending order. This first uh, snapshot, two-month thumbnail snapshot, is a look at the U.S. dollar. And we are seeing a rush on the U.S. dollar. It is pointing to this safe haven type of environment that we are in and also has a lot to do with uh, the Federal Reserve's buyback of uh, securities. Actually, the central bank is going to be exchanging U.S. Treasury securities for U.S. dollars. That's going to begin next week, so we can see this snap back here in the dollar. We're going to take a look at some of the areas here that are doing well in response to this uptick in the dollar, and it is expected to continue. Actually, I can share it with you right now, and it is gold stocks. So this is another proxy for safe haven. The areas I'm going to share here with you within gold are those that have high cash flow. That's an important uh, component. And I have four stocks in that area that are really picking up quite well. Let's just move on down the line here. I talked about biotech stocks continuing to generally outpace the markets. This is all about coronavirus. Those companies that are forging ahead with test kits, with uh, phase one and phase two clinical trials on uh, viral potential cures as well as, um, trying to think of the other <laughs> wording, but we're going to get in and take a look at some of those stocks, a handful of names there. So you can see we have quite a bit that we are going to be covering. This is that move into oil. US O is that oil. And really, for those of you that uh, are not inclined to do the work, you can take a look at this US O uh, ETF as a potential. What I would do is drill down, go into this intraday. This is a one hour price chart of USO and use those same metrics. Quite clearly, it is overbought given that significant advance this week, but you are going to want to see this continuation of this particular USO finding support upward trending. So let's go ahead back to our candle glance view and take a look. This is all about uh, TNX is the yield on that 10 year historic lows being hit there, impacting the broader markets. So 
let's go ahead from here. And I do want to take a moment. We are going to start with a quick look at some of these energy stocks that I was able to uncover as looking somewhat compelling. So up here, what we can do, what I did is I ran a screen for all energy stocks that are currently above their 20 day simple moving average. We have a lot of these energy stocks that are attempting to reverse downtrends. However, I will tell you, they are not ready uh, in any way for prime time yet. So what I did uncover in doing that screen is the one area among energy stocks that is uh, vibrantly above. This is your green 10-day simple moving average. Let me go ahead and add a 21-day so you can get the relevance uh, here as far as uh, potential moves. Now, believe me, this is bottom fishing, not normally my style, in but it is pointing you toward stocks that are just tipping up above this blue 21 day simple moving average with an eye toward a potential advance. The upside resistance isn't there, a potential advance up to this 50 day. But realistically, we can see that the RSI is not quite positive, although we did get this downtrend reversal with the MACD. So one thing I did want to point out to you, this is Magellan Midstream Partners, MMP. And so this one area that this stock is a part of is a limited partnership. They do have different tax uh, consequences. You'll want to note that before you potentially get involved, but they are, uh, again, uh, royalty trust companies. MMP has a high yield, 11.6%. So what I'm going to do here is very quickly show you what I uncovered among many of these names. This is another service that talks about uh, upgrades and downgrades on Wall Street. So this is MMP, that midstream, and we can see a number of high quality Wall Street firms have have been upgrading this stock more recently. Now, these are going to be real value plays. JP Morgan sees a 35% upside uh, potential for MMP. So that is what I uncovered among uh, many of these energy type of stocks. So uh, this is a view of that screen that I ran. Let's go back here and I'll share with you a couple of other names because there is a lot that I want to get to. But again, bearing in mind, these are limited partnerships with high yields. Uh, this is Williams, WMB, and uh, Royalty Trust LP, a nice 11% yield. We can see it's broken back up above that 10 and that 21 day simple moving average. So again, for those of you inclined to uh, potentially very, very super short term plays, drill down to those intraday charts. Uh, this is another one, CQP, 9% yield. So just some of the highlights there. I don't want to be remiss and not share with you some of these other areas. So we're going to go ahead and move on from here because I talked to you about uh, monetary policy within the U.S. government and the anticipation that it could trigger either inflationary or deflationary consequences. So there is a move to some of these gold stocks. So let's take a moment now and take a look at some of these names. Now, these gold stocks had a very significant run-up into the mid-March period. This is Kinross Gold KGC, just putting it up as an example of this nice uh, significant uptrend that we see. But from mid-March, and um, it could be very well a lot more for this stock. This is a very low price stock. Let's take a look at a larger cap candidate within gold that is a lot more constructive looking. This is Barrick, G-O-L-D is the ticker, but overall this drop was about 13.5% from peak to trough from this seven-year high that a lot of these gold stocks did in fact hit. So what we are seeing now since then, subsequently a double bottom, we're looking at a daily price chart, so that would mean higher lows, which is quite constructive, and the price has now broken back back above these simple moving averages, this shorter term green 10 day simple moving average poised to break back above, it already did break above that 200 day, now poised to break up, up, up above the 50 day and that is called uh, very 
uh, timely enough, a golden cross, and that is quite bullish. So we can see with GOLD, the RSI is positive, MACD is positive. So this is much more in line with a stock that would be of much more interest to me as far as having potential upside. I'll share with you another larger name in this space. This is Newmont. NEM, another daily price chart, and that same type of bullish action taking place here, that MACD just crossing into positive territory, also with that positive RSI. Both the uh, Newmont and Barrick are viewed as two of the better names. They have top management teams in place, strong free cash flow to outride uh, this potential uh, impact with the coronavirus, and they are raising estimates. Newmont, 61% expected growth this year, 23% next year. So you like to see those analyst upgrades as the stock is potentially improving. And then also that flight to quality concept that we are seeing with the US dollar improving and now uh, gold. This is another one, Nova Gold NG is the ticker symbol, very similar dynamics. This one has now broken back up above that red 50 day simple moving average. RSI and MACD poised to turn positive. So that those were some of those gold names that I did want to share with you. We're going to take a very brief break. And when I get back, we are going to take a look at healthcare and consumer staples. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal, author of the MEM Edge Report. In my bi-weekly report, I highlight top growth stocks as they enter buy zones, and I educate subscribers on why that stock is attractive both technically and fundamentally. In addition, you'll be alerted to when it's time to exit that stock based on negative technical action. And this bi-weekly report gives you confidence by providing fundamental insights into why an area of the market is strong and which companies within that strong area have the best growth profiles that'll help propel that stock higher. Subscribers to the MEM Edge Report are benefiting from my expertise in uncovering top performing growth stocks. Subscribe now to take advantage of my special trial offer. And welcome back. We are taking a look now at some of these larger biotech companies that are in the forefront, again, as far as moving closer to providing uh, patient potential advances, uh, vaccines, treatments, and so forth. This first stock is Gilead, G-I-L-D. We're looking at a daily price chart. Very rather sloppy, no doubt about it. We are just all over as far as volatility. Uh, I would maybe put this on your radar screen. The re reasoning is because they did reach uh, the European Medicine Agency they did issue what's called a compassionate use, where they have unauthorized medicines, such as those that Gilead is providing right now. Uh, they allow a clinical study for patients. So it is under study uh, as far as their potential treatment, and Gilead has certainly been in the forefront. Uh, but just note that you are going to be involved in a stock that is quite a bit uh, overly volatile. Uh, OSUR, this one already had a significant advance. I would drill down to an intraday for this one. Uh, they own an FDA-approved uh, non-invasive uh, saliva sample company. So that's really been uh, picking up. And you can see, so it had this, I, of course, we are not early. This uh, is an intraday 60-minute chart. This would have been your ideal entry. So we are now reversing that. But we still have a positive uh, RSI and MACD, still both in positive territory. So a break back up above these moving averages, you could potentially uh, get into that particular stock, and that is how you would play some of these uh, smaller, bigger movers. This is Regeneron, R-E-G-N, a large uh, name, certainly. They were in the forefront when coronavirus originally came out as being a threat. And we can see that Regeneron, this is a daily, 
price chart, we've had that nice black line up through the red while this moving average convergence divergence has been up here in positive territory. So we are potentially reversing this near term uh, downtrend while remaining in positive territory, likewise with the RSI. And they are currently uh, developing a multi antibody treatment. And they also came out this week and announced that employees have volunteered to work the weekend, put in long hours as they make 500,000 coronavirus tests that they are going to uh, go ahead and uh, give as a, uh, they are not going to charge for them. So very, very good on them. We can take a look at another smaller cap name in this healthcare space. This is Lakeland, L-A-K-E. This big spike here was all about uh, speculation because the company, they do uh, currently distribute and uh, manufacture disposable protective clothing, and they were a favored supplier during Ebola. So we can see this is when coronavirus and its threat first came to the forefront. It had a huge spike. But since then, we have kind of uh, gotten into a trading range here, and we can see that it's emerging out of this nice three-week base with the RSI and this MACD, again, all while in positive territory, it is potentially reversing that downtrend that actually in this case was not really a downtrend, it was just a back and fill current period, similar to back here when we had that nice black line up through the red. So I would certainly put that on your radar screen. And let's go ahead, I have time to cover just a couple of names within the uh, consumer staple. That was up 3.4% this week. I would call it the pantry play with a lot of these stocks that are, uh, as individuals continue to work from home and they're uncovering the fact that uh, people are moving towards snacks. They're not being particularly healthy. Uh, this is Walmart pointing it out because it was up 9% this week, but the chart looks only somewhat interesting. I would uh, take a closer look at Pepsi, PEP, a top consumer staple stock, but this too would be only a very near-term potential play. Let me go ahead and put that 21-day simple moving average so you can get that other perspective again, very shorter term. And we can see that the stock's price has broken up above this green 10 day, as well as this blue 21 day simple moving average. Now I will tell you uh, hands down that the overall trend is not constructive. This is more of a potential shorter term play of up to this other area, this 50 day simple moving average as resistance. This RSI just poised to turn positive and we did already have that MACD positive crossover. Let's take a look at another very heavy weighting within consumer staples. This is Procter & Gamble. All of these offer nice yields in that 2 to 3% range, but this is another shorter term because realistically, let's just look at this 50-day simple moving average. All of your simple moving averages are generally downtrending, so I am going to not suggest that this would be a viable play. We can see uh, it, it will have these rally attempts, but by and large, that is not an attractive chart. I am going to share with you some other names in this area that are really benefiting. This is Kroger KR. They are a food retailer, and they did have this sharp drop here, but the company announced explosive March, 30% same store sales. And they had only expected a 2.2% same store sales number. So I am going to leave it at that. For those of you who have not trialed my MEM Edge report, I urge you to do so because there are a number of stocks that we did not cover today that I am certainly a bit more constructive on, and you will get a front row seat to that, as well as more broader market insights. Everyone, have a great weekend. Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, 
Give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you, and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.